now create a picture that shows how the four fundamental spaces relate to each other and how they capture how a matrix A maps a vector from Cn to Cm. So on the left we have Cn and somewhere in that space is x. We know that the matrix A, when applied to x, creates a vector B which lies somewhere in Cm. Now, it doesn't just lie anywhere, it actually is within the column space. On the left, we have the row space, and we have the zero vectors on both sides, and then we have the null space. And we know that the null space is orthogonal to the row space, and actually we know a little bit more than that. We know that all vectors that are orthogonal to the row space are in the null space, and all vectors that are orthogonal to the null space are in the row space. Okay, what that means is that the vector x can be uniquely written as the sum of a vector in the row space, x sub r, and a vector in the null space, x sub n. And we know that the vector x sub n maps to the zero vector in Cm. All right, so if we look at a times x, then we see that that's a times xr plus xn. And that means that it's a times xr plus a times xn. And we know that a times xn is 0, so we get that it's equal to a times xr. So what that really means is that that vector in the row space maps to vector b when we apply a to it. All right, now, in addition to that, we have one more subspace, and that is the left null space, which is the set of all vectors that are orthogonal to the column space. And as a matter of fact, all vectors that are orthogonal to the column space are in the left null space, and all of the vectors that are orthogonal to the left null space are in the column space. Now, if the dimension of the row space is r, then the dimension of the column space is r, the dimension of the null space is n minus r, and the dimension of the left null space is m minus r. And this picture captures how matrix A maps vectors from Cn to Cm and how that relates to the four fundamental spaces.